Amina Ali from Earth Networks is with us talking about something that's very innovative with regard to weather. Uh, Amina, welcome. Thank you, Stan. It's a pleasure to be here. So with regard to weather, people think of weather sometimes here in the United States as something that we watch on television. Yes. It's a little more than that, though, isn't it? It is. Actually, you know, we're very lucky here in the U.S. As a country, we've invested over $5 billion over the last 25 years to get very sophisticated and robust weather observations that are available through a whole variety of ways. And there's a whole ecosystem and a supply chain before you actually see that forecast on TV. There's actually observations um, through weather sensors that are taken in real time, such mm -hmm. as what we do. Mm -hmm. um, and we have the, the largest network here in the States and, and globally of professional grade sensors. And then there's the processing, analysis, churning through use of supercomputers and other kinds of very powerful uh, backbone kind of infrastructure to interpret that and then deliver that in real time to people so that they can really make decisions. So it's really about decision making mm -hmm. with the data. And that was something that I was going to, to ask because some people will look at the weather and they will think, well, you know, I, I need to know what weather is coming because I need to know if I need to bring my, my umbrella. Right. But it is so much more than that for so it many is. people around the world. It is. It's actually one of these, you know, basic interconnected things with the planet. And depending on who you are, you know, you could be wondering, do I need an umbrella? Do I need a raincoat? That's a very consumer view. To it could be in the case of more extreme weather and severe weather. We're talking about life safety for people that are out there. It could be crowds of people. It could be individual people, too, from a business perspective. Think about all the supply chains that are impacted by weather. Oh, yeah. Aviation, transportation, energy and utilities, agriculture, um, any number of industries. If you're basically doing business outside, chances are, you are impacted by weather. And so you need to have this information to figure out how you can run your business operations most effectively. What kind of sensors do you do? You indicated that you have the, the largest, most comprehensive sensor network here in the mm -hmm. United States. Mm -hmm. what, what kind of sensors do you have? Yes. So we have a terrestrial-based or on-ground sensor mm -hmm. that can be deployed on top of a building. Small sensor that would measure uh, weather and it would me measure what we call total lightning. And total lightning is actually really important to measure to understand what impending severe weather is coming. It turns out that about 80% of lightning is cloud to cloud. And while there's occasional sensors there, there's not really a nationwide network until mm -hmm. ours right now in the States. So we're actually, we work very closely with the National Weather Service. They're a key partner of ours mm -hmm. uh, in a public-private partnership, and they're actually uh, going to be purchasing this data from us to feed into their models for severe weather forecasting. Mm -hmm. And if basically, if you can see the buildup of charge cloud to cloud, you can see what's going to happen from, uh, you know, tornado, hurricane, uh, high winds, hail, heavy rains, all of those kinds of weather systems. And then if you kind of pan back and think globally what's going on with that, there's an increasing tendency for extreme weather to happen all over the planet. So yeah. there's, a, there's a big need to understand where that's going to happen to, to save lives, protect businesses, all kinds of things. And actually, it's the, the savings lives part is uh, why you're here at the Clinton Global Initiative, isn't it? That's exactly right. Tell us about your commitment. Our commitment really is to Haiti. So we've done uh, this whole model that I'm talking about here in the U.S. Uh, we have a great partnership in Brazil, so I'm really pleased to see what we've done in Brazil and a couple mm -hmm. of other countries. But we think this is great technology, uh, disruptive technology that could really help LDCs or the least developed countries like mm -hmm. Haiti. And given the um, Clinton Foundation and the Clinton Global Initiative's focus on Haiti, we thought it would make a lot of sense to really have a uh, a model there for what we could do in the developing world. And it kind of goes like this. If you put forth a couple of sensors for weather and lightning, you work in partnership with the meteorological service of that country, and you figure out how to disseminate the warnings to severe weather, mm -hmm. it, it could be for people, it could be for businesses. You think about hurricanes. So most recently we had Hurricane Isaac, you think about Hurricane Irene. Gustav, prior before then, there's been thousands of lives lost in Haiti, yeah. and people have had no warnings. Partially it's been because there's been no infrastructure to produce those warnings, mm -hmm. and partially it's been even if that infrastructure was there, there hasn't been an efficient way to disseminate that out to people. So our commitment covers both parts of that. The first part of it mm -hmm. is establishing the infrastructure to actually do the readings, get the observations, be able to produce the warnings, and then working with 
our partners in Haiti, disseminating that out. Ideally, we'd love to get that out through social media, through SMS. Actually, the um, penetration of mobile phones in Haiti is remarkably high. Mm -hmm. And in fact, they are the biggest country, I think they send out almost 500 million SMS messages a year. So very active use of SMS. Oh my gosh. So imagine if you could integrate, you know, we call it from the sensor to the app, in terms of measuring these conditions in real time, analyzing them, and then delivering those warnings to people uh, through eventually through SMS, through, through radio, through TV, through Twitter, through other kinds of mechanisms, it could be really impactful. Mm. Well, it sounds like just by its very nature that your system is, is replicable. Yes, absolutely. So it's designed to be pretty lightweight, so it does not require huge investments in technology. In fact, our preferred model is a public-private partnership model where we would work with the country, with their MET service, or it could be a research institution or a combination of the two. So you've got the public and private sectors working together with a shared interest and shared commitments. We're a private sector company, mm -hmm. so we're really interested in figuring out these business models that would work. And if you think about leveraging things like cloud computing, uh, in terms of keeping costs down, getting product out to market faster, product in this case being the warnings and the forecast information kinds mm -hmm. of things, it makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. What's next for Earth Networks? Uh, really, we are in a huge expansion phase along a number of dimensions. Uh, part of it really uh, is around how do you leverage mobile technology and the capabilities of this total lightning network. So for instance, in the U.S., um, huge smartphone penetration, more than half the population has a smartphone here in the U.S. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we're going to be bringing to market very shortly. We have on our own Weatherbug is our consumer property, if you're familiar with us. Mm -hmm. um, um, the ability to get personalized lightning detection using the GPS or the location-based services on your smartphone. So imagine you're outside, you could be golfing, you could be attending your child's soccer game or what have you, uh, or just attending a concert or whatnot. You may get warnings about general weather information, but how do you know if you're safe from lightning? Yeah. So we'll have the ability, uh, we do on our Weatherbug product now, and we'll be doing so in partnership in a, in a broader sense, to press a button and see in real time how far the lightning is from where you are right then and there with your phone. Um, wow. Pretty, pretty disruptive idea yeah. that marries advancements in the technology with the capabilities of GPS functionality of your phone, puts that together in a sort of magical way to say, where is the lightning? How far is it? And then we provide recommendations in terms of it's 10 miles away, get inside right now, and it has to be 30 minutes or 10 miles to be safe. So that's an example of the kind of innovation that we're going to continue to do on the mobile side here in the States and wherever we have dense networks. And globally, we want to expand our network to be able to bring this kind of technology, which is a fraction of the cost of traditional technologies, uh, to bring this kind of information to people, ideally through their mobile applications. Wow. Absolutely fantastic. Thank you very much for being with us. Thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure.